Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt attends the launching of the new aircraft carrier, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Bernard Baruch, presidential advisor. Fleet Admiral King and Army Chief of Staff Marshall. In ceremonies at Brooklyn Navy Yard, Mrs. Roosevelt speaks of the ship named after the late president. I'm very glad to be here today. I know that my husband would have felt very keenly and appreciated the honor of having this super carrier give his name. The wife of Admiral Towers, Deputy Pacific Commander, names the carrier. Water pours into the dry dock, filling it until the ship is floated. The mighty new USS Roosevelt joins the fleet to hurl her fighting strength against Japan. Ruthless Nazi nears the end of the road. Held prisoner with two henchmen is Arthur Seiss Inquart, first Hitler's deputy in Austria, then the hated ruler of an enslaved Netherlands. The now deflated overlord is nervous. Under this Reich commissioner, the Netherlands was drained of food to feed Germany. Captured by Canadian troops while attempting to flee, Seiss Inquart is thrown into jail to await trial as a major Nazi war criminal. At Plainsburg, Germany, near the Danish border, is the headquarters of Hitler's successor, Grand Admiral Dönitz, submarine chief and short-time Nazi Führer. Dönitz has now taken his rightful place in an allied prisoner of war cell. Five heavy bombers wing into Bradley Field, Connecticut. They are just one flight of one of the greatest transport operations of all time. In 60 days, 3,400 bombers will land in America, returning 40,000 American airmen from Europe on their way to the Pacific. At a rate of a plane every five minutes, the flying fortresses and liberators set down. Over a thousand officers and men of the 8th Air Force pour out. Soon most of them will see action again in the same Air Force in the war against Japan. But first, for every man, a 30-day furlough back home. unprecedented joint session of the Congress, Sergeant Jake Lindsay receives the United States Congressional Medal of Honor. His citation, read by Army General Marshall, commends the 24-year-old soldier for extraordinary heroism in combat near Hamish, Germany. President Truman comes forward to present the decoration. For the 100th time in this war, the nation's highest award is presented to an infantryman. Congress cheers as President Truman decorates the young hero. Through its highest award, the entire nation pays tribute to a brave soldier and through him to its fighting forces around the world. Justice for French traitors, Lafont and Bonny, shown here in Nazi uniforms. They had helped the Gestapo by organizing civilians in state demonstrations against British and American prisoners. These films, photographed in Paris, were shown in German newsreels to create the impression that Frenchmen hated the Allies and now are used as evidence in court. These men and women played their parts well. It is unlikely that any of them will escape punishment. Lafont and Bonny, who betrayed their country, face a French Patriot's firing squad. Infantrymen of the 37th Division, driving north on Luzon Island, Last remaining Japanese snipers out of a valley five miles from Baguio, 
summer capital of the Philippine Islands. but no Japanese escapes. Past enemy bodies, the United States forces press on to Baguio. Island children are happy to see the troops, as are their elders. The infantry enters Baguio, a major step forward in the long campaign of northern Luzon. On vital Okinawa Island, 700 miles northwest, plane-throwing tanks attack Japanese positions in the valley south of Naha, capital of Okinawa. General Geiger, Corps Commander, and General Del Val, 1st Marine Division, oversee operations as Marines storm Japanese fortress caves cut into Okinawa's ragged terrain. Surging into the island's southern tip to capture Naha, the Marines were driven off one important hill nine separate times before they took it and held on. Advancing toward the ridge, the Marines press home a strong attack with tank support. In almost 10 weeks of fighting, General Buckner's 10th Army of Soldiers and Marines has won all but a small fraction of Okinawa's area. 50,000 of the enemy have been killed. 30,000 Americans are killed, wounded, or missing. But at last, Naha is entered. Marines move cautiously in the streets of Naha, a city of 60,000. The large remaining enemy garrisons, squeezed into tiny areas at each end of Okinawa, are yet to be wiped out. The fight goes on. Japanese resistance on Okinawa is being crushed. 